Welcome back. You're watching the agenda today on our question of the day. We are asking you as South Africa observes the National Day of Reconciliation 24 years since it was inaugurated. What do you believe still needs to be done to foster reconciliation and national unity? We have some tweets uh, coming in on the matter. So let's have a look at uh, some of those tweets coming in. I think the current government uh, did all their best. What is left is amongst ourselves to ensure that we reconcile with one another irrespective of, of race or whatsoever. That one coming in from Victor. This one coming in from Zerupane. Uh, we need to respect one another, teach and learn from each other and reconcile as a well-respected country. Simpiwe says, share the land equally, nothing else. And the last one coming in from Lobuli saying, number one, remove the ANC from power. Number two, South Africans need a competent, good, clean governance. Three, build and support black businesses so white panoply is not so obvious. Change the constitution, hope for a new political party, and lastly, have a strong immigration policy implementation. Now, we thank you very much for participating in our question of the day. With that being said, though, uh, the EFF is going to be uh, delivering uh, some of the results. They will be also addressing the media briefing, and that's going to be outlining some of the decisions following its national elective conference held at NASRIC. Our reporter on the ground, SABC News reporter Natasha Piri, joins us now live. First, she is joined by Dr. Mbuisen Ndlozi. Natasha? Well, very good morning to you once again, Shantae, and to our SABC viewers. Of course, this marks the last day of the EFF's National People Assembly, and of course, this also coincides with our Reconciliation Day. I'm actually in conversation with Dr. Mbuyuseni Ndlozi. Thank you so much for joining us thank you, thank you. on the SABC, and congratulations for being uh, re-elected or nominated into the central uh, command team of the EFF. Now, it's quite interesting that the EFF had amended its constitution to increase the central command team members from 35 to 40 uh, members. What was the reasoning behind this? Well, uh, obviously, it's uh, to get more men power and women power. Mm -hmm. uh, the experience of the last five years uh, was such that uh, sometimes you had uh, people getting too many responsibilities, and it just works better in terms of deployment. Because we are thinking of a deployment strategy where We've got a region city member, uh, as opposed to a province. So we want to be able to uh, get that much on the ground. Uh, and in some instances, make it actually sub-regions, that you're deployed in a sub-region so that you're able to service mm. structures at really at a, at a grassroots level. Mm -hmm. And uh, to that extent, when that extension of the of the of the CCT seeks to take care of that, but also you must have a, a very larger pool of people uh, to constantly choose from in relation to responsibility. Okay, like Dr. Ngozi, it's quite quite interesting here as well. Twenty two out of those forty members actually female, and I think you've superseded the requirement of having fifty percent of female representation in the organisation's higher structure. Yes, it's not just women; it's powerful women, tried and tested women women that have been on the ground, that have been loyal to the organization, but that have been reliable. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things in this journey is the reliability of people. People that don't show up only when it's good, when the weather is good, but when the weather is bad, they are not there. People who uh, are there even when the organization mistreats them. Um, so the reliability, and I think the, the fact that there was no ballot shows you that the manner of uh, deciding was through deliberations. I mean, deliberative democracy as it would be. Uh, you went through radical scrutiny, uh, what, what would normally be called the eye of the needle. So uh, I know all those people, I've seen them on the ground, I've met them on many instances across the country. It's, it's actually capable women that the organization can really depend on, that the revolution can rely on uh, to deliver 
uh, on whatever responsibilities that they're going to be bestowed on. Okay, so today is the last day. Members are making their way into commissions. What can we expect from those commissions? In terms of constitutional amendments, <coughs> what other amendments were actually made? No, no, the, the commissions finished last night, okay. late last night. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back to plenary to hear the reports of those commissions. And every commission started with the conversations around organizational redesign, mm -hmm. some of which one of the big issues is the membership of the EFF, whether it should be open to, there's a proposal about the membership of the EFF being open to all Africans mm -hmm. and Africans of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Uh, Africans from the rest of the continent and then Africans from the diaspora. And uh, if we don't do that, how do we accommodate uh, uh, those people who would like to be part of the economic emancipation movement uh, and want to be part of us? Uh, what would be the privileges, what would be the rights, there's going to be that discussion. Uh, it should have taken place already at the Commission's level, it's going to be tabled there. Uh, there are questions of um, um, doing provincial structures uh, according to the sizes of the provinces so that we don't do one size fits all. So for instance in KZN you've got 11 regions mm -hmm. but in Northwest you've got four regions. Is it rational to have the same number of PCT members mm -hmm. when the other PCT actually is dealing with more responsibility, a larger province uh, than in the Northwest? That's also going to be tabled there. The last one, maybe that is more interesting as well, is a mid term conference. Uh, so that we don't just meet, the next time we meet is five years. Mm -hmm. There must be a mid-term mid conference which checks on the progress of, revolution, of, of resolutions, check if we need to replace some in the central command team. So there's a proposal for a national general assembly, provincial general assemblies, mid-term. So two and a half years into the term of office, we must have that conference. That's going to also serve as a, uh, an important constitutional amendment. So yesterday... Um um, throughout the press briefing, when the newly elected leadership had an interaction with the media, we heard uh, Julius Malema saying that um, they, they, well, the EFF actually wants a United States of Africa. Talk to us about the, the, the terminology between the <coughs> Africa One currency. Uh, well, I mean, uh, this is not an original idea of the EFF. It is a Pan-Africanist dream that as African people, we've got one destination because we're all affected by colonization mm -hmm. and that the best way to truly um, decolonize um, is for us to unite as a people and to forge a common destination. So, and also to realize that we stand to benefit when we are united as African people. We can stand as a power block uh, amongst uh, nations across the globe. A united continent uh, must mean you know, a common currency, the free movement of goods and people, um, and to begin to have a, a one criminal justice system. There must be a continental court to prosecute dictators, to prosecute authoritarian people, uh, to prosecute those that are involved in crimes against humanity, so that we don't depend on the International Criminal Court. Uh, those are the things that uh, would basically happen. And, and it's, it's really an important conversation that we're going to have to start campaigning heavily about in the rest of the continent. Uh, it's a dream that uh, the founding fathers and mothers uh, of the liberation movement uh, back in 1957 uh, with Kwame Nkrumah uh, and the first generation really uh, of heads of state. It's been a dream and everybody that cares about this continent has to plug into that dream of the United States of Africa. Okay, and just lastly, in conclusion, what can we expect from today? What time will um, Julius Malema be, you know, uh, addressing delegates to actually close off? And what time can we actually expect that? The latest we think we can uh, uh, anticipate to finish uh, because we really have commissions. We've got eight commissions to, to process the reports. Uh, they are very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Uh, uh, it's about adopting because they come with drafted resolutions. And then after that, it's a, it's a declaration of conference which is going to probably be processed by the Secretary General. Okay. And then is the closing address uh, of the CIC. Uh, there isn't much business today because the Central Command Team has already been constituted. Mm -hmm. uh, voting is closed. Uh, that's really what always you know takes us long. But uh, also the 
majority of the discussions really happened uh, into the late hours uh, uh, last night uh, in the commissions and and I think that uh, by two o'clock we, we really should be be done we should be closing okay thank you so much I appreciate it thank, thank you. you and thank you for the SABC for being here and uh, covering us thank you for doing your constitutional duty as the public <laughs> broadcaster well there you have it from Dr. Mercedes Dozi I neither no, I really don't want to add or subtract uh, to what he's just said so uh, from me Natasha is back to you in studio Shante Thank you very much, uh, Natasha Perry for SABC News, uh, talking to Dr. Mbuiseni Ndlozi on the sidelines of uh, the EFF and, uh, of course, uh, wrapping up its last day of its elective conference.